first time founders raising funding. You ended up raising from like Graycroft and Felicia, so like $6.7 million total. And it could be off depending on if you know crunch base or not. But with that raising capital, how was that process? And I, I ask in this way slowly because I'm thinking of it. And initially it seems like it's almost like a content play, a media company, but really then it's more of like subscription and it's a little different. So how did that fundraising process go in terms of telling your story around what osmosis was? Yeah, yeah. Um, and even also, you know, the, just the decision to make to, to fundraise to begin with. Um, that's something that that as a as a first time founder, a founder in general, I think you you always kind of struggle with because there's this balance of, um, you know, one metaphor that I've heard used is, you know, taking venture funding is, is strapping, strapping a rocket to your company. Right. And so one of the things with that metaphor that I think is very appropriate is you don't really get to control the direction too much. Once you strap the rocket, you need to be pointed in the right direction. Um, and so you need to, you need to know where you're going. Um, and so I think the business model that you're, that you're starting with really determines the timing of funding. So, you know, if you, if we had been a company that was, if we were selling a free product that, uh, you know, was going to be getting revenue from advertising and we needed a hundred million users, we would have had to have raised immediately on day one. Right. Um, we didn't raise, uh, we raised, we raised seed funding and we've had excellent angel investors through the years. We've raised seed, seed funding. Um, uh, but from 2012, when we started as a, as a project in a classroom, we didn't raise our series A until 2019. Um, and we were able to do that because we were bootstrapped the entire time um, and, and also very lean. Um, and a lot of that came from the early B2C revenue that then led into those, those early B2B deals. Um, so we were able to fund a lot of our growth. Now, at some point, we decided, okay, do we actually want to expand into these, these other fields like nursing? Um, and in order to do that, we could keep doing it on the bootstrap track, but you know, when you actually map out the content that you have to build, it's like, oh, it's going to take us four or five years to, to do that. Um, so it makes a lot more sense that, you know, if we can get people excited about our idea uh, to, to get funding right now and, and, and accelerate that. And so that, that was kind of the decision around that. And then it, and it creates a very easy story. Once you have product market fit, you already have revenue and you're able to say, OK, now we're expanding to something that's very related. Um, that's that's just a much nicer story for, for investors to hear. And much more convincing. Yeah. And there is so much that goes into that. I love that you mentioned like to even raise funding or not. And I think there's a lot of founders who are in a similar position as you. And it's like, we could do it without raising funding, potentially, if you're looking off, off of revenue. And it would just take a lot longer to get there. And it's like, you, do you want to strike now while you have have the opportunity while it is hot and like versus waiting and potentially not knowing what that's going to be as well. And there are different expectations that come along with being venture funded and again, first time founders, what's been helpful along the way for you, Shib, the rest of the team, as you've obviously have raised funding and have an expectation that comes with that from these top investors, what's been helpful for you along the way of like, okay, how do we think bigger? How do we look at like what this looks like for an actual exit? Like, how do you think about that or what's been helpful maybe uh, along the way with that and thinking through the company from the venture side of things? Yeah. I mean, so one of the things that I kind of had an idea of, but, but didn't have a, a clear picture and, and do now and wish, wish that I had before just, just to know what to expect was, you know, when, when you're shifting from being a bootstrap company, you're pretty much accountable to your co-founder and your customers. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, when you, when you take that step into VC funding, now you have quarterly board meetings, uh, you're, you're accountable to, to a totally different uh, stakeholder who also has, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of experience that you have to kind of combine what they're telling you with the experience they have and, and ask to, you know, kind of be guided toward, okay, what, what is our company going to look like as it grows? Um, and we I think on some level, we knew that things would change as we got to be a bigger company. Um, but I don't think we fully understood um, all of the, all of the changes that, that would have to happen as you grow. It's, it's not a matter of just being, uh, you know, two three, to three times the size. Once you grow as a company, you have to grow your kind of organizational intelligence. You have to be able to manage really, really well. Um, there's all of these things that, that were very easy when you were a small company and you could just jump on a call with, with someone you knew versus, you know, now you've got an entire team who's just been here for two months. They don't know 
you know, all of the culture. They don't know where all of the things are. You know, there's the lots of training that has to be done. Um, that's a, that's a totally different, uh, experience. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that, that would have been helpful very early on, um, and, and we do have now is bringing in people who have been through that experience before. Um, because there's, there's kind of only so much, you, you know, what, what I immediately tried to do is I fell back to my, um, to my approach for, for most other things, which is, okay, I, I, I found myself in an area where I lack knowledge. I'm going to read a lot of books. Um, and, you know, so I went through good to great, you know, high output management, you know, measure what matters, all of the classics, um, trying to understand what to do. Um, now, looking back on that, I, I kind of think of there's a, there's a quote from William Osler, who is the founder, one of the founders of Johns Hopkins. Um, and he said that, you know, a, a medical student or a doctor who only reads, or who doesn't read books, sails an uncharted sea. Uh, but, but one who only reads books and doesn't see patients uh, doesn't go to sea at all, uh, right? And so really, you know, we were trying, you know, being first-time founders, going into to, uh, you know, this, this new stage, we were going to sea for the first time. Um, and having somebody on the, on the ship who has sailed a few times before, uh, I think is, has been really key. And I'm, I'm glad we, we are now to that point where we, we have those people in place. But if I had it to do over again in 2019, day one after after we closed this the series a you know i i think i would have started recruiting for those roles